Things are going, but they're going slow. Anyway, welcome, welcome back to the Bees Like That podcast. As always, I'm your host, Chris. What are we going to do today? We're going to debrief this contest prep. Would it be two preps or one? I think it's just one. Let's we'll call it one. <clears throat> two preps, one show. Don't even go there. <laughs> uh, so, to summarize it, well, let me let me take it back really quick. Let me just say some things really quick before I get too deep off into this. And you've heard me talk about this before. Last year, prepping for the one show was a bit of a shit show. I'll just keep it a buck with you. Um, a lot more anxiety, like it was the first prep, so that had a lot to do with it. High levels of anxiety, real worry about I'm not going to be prepared. Um, a bit of communication breakdown, I think, between um, that coach and I. And it could have just been who knows, personality differences, I don't know, whatever. But the difference between last year's prep and this prep, that's one of them. Um, the other difference is I had a, a more accurate um, idea in my head of what to expect right because last year like I had no idea what to expect and I wasn't getting a ton of guidance about any of the stuff that I would face or that I was dealing with it was just kind of like hey yeah man that's just par for the course yeah don't worry about it just do this do that not a lot went into explaining any of this stuff to me um or what I was going through anyway this year I didn't have any of those issues my coach this year is great um I feel like she understands a bit better the way that I operate. It's kind of like my personal um, psychology, you know, my overall disposition, my propensity to work hard, and my dedication, my level of dedication, etc. So, um, I just and and I think the experience level between uh, coaching is different. The style is definitely different. But I think that the level of experience is, is definitely different. And, and I'm not a professional bodybuilder, so I can't, I don't know, accu- I don't think that I can accurately speak to what it's like being a professional bodybuilder. But what I think that I observe um, in working with a professional bodybuilder now and working with an amateur bodybuilder last year, although the the experience in years, I think, may be comparable, I don't know that the experience, the experiences themselves are, are like, comparable, right? Because I think there's a different level of expectation, there's a different level of pressure, um, and honestly, there's just a different level of talent and skill that separate, you know... Um, a person who's essentially been on the amateur side of things for 30, 35 years and a person who's been on the pro level of things for and maybe not that long, but, you know, apples to apples, bro. Like, it, it, a long-ass time. You know what I'm saying? So there's differences. Levels to this is what I'm saying. Uh, so... The first show, we went back to the Tandy Johnson Classic, Emerald City Smoothie Tandy Johnson Classic, which was a ton of fun. Um, It was not as nerve-wracking as last year, A, because the venue is the same. Um, So there was a a degree of familiarity that that we encountered that was, you know, felt great. Um, Although I I did have a bit of a bone to pick with with the... the host hotel. Um, I made those reservations a year in advance because I knew I was going back to that show. And so I wanted to be sure that I had space for as many people as in my family who wanted to come and kick it and experience the show with me as needed, right? So I reserved two suites a year ago. I get there. Well, I go to, you know, 
about two weeks out, maybe a week out. I'm just going over my reservations, and I notice that there's only been one suite. Well, that's not true. So this is how I broke it down. I reserved two suites for the first night. And two, no, yeah, two suites for, for two nights is what I did. Um, and that's not the way it shook out. <laughs> we ended up getting, you know, having everything work out, but it was a ton of hassle. Um, shout out to my wife. She had to do a lot of running around behind the scenes to make sure that we didn't have to check out the day of the show because they didn't have, you know, our reservations right. Anyway, I don't think we'll be going back next year to that show. Not because of that, um, just because we want to do some different shows. We want to have some different experiences. Um, three weeks after that, just on the 13th here, just recently, we did the Washington the NPC Washington State Open Championship. Um, big difference in between shows. Um, still a great experience. As it, it felt a bit more chaotic at that show. But uh, all in all, still a great experience. Um, Really looking forward to the scorecards coming out. <laughs> I want to take a look at those. I just I w- I'd planned on staying and talking to the judges after the show, but I was, yeah, I just didn't. So, looking forward to um, checking out the scorecards because I'm asked some questions <laughs> about how some of that stuff shook out, but uh, not complaining. We did really well, you know. Um, we didn't get the overall um, in bodybuilding, which was kind of a bummer. I felt pretty confident going into the overall that I had a pretty good shot. My hope is that it was close, but we ended up not taking the overall. Got second um, in the bodybuilding class, but still, still a great time. Um, so the way that it shook out as far as placings go, I took first in Masters 45 plus, and that's what got me into the overall to compete for the overall. Um, took first, and that's in bodybuilding, open bodybuilding. Um, took first in. Classic physique, novice class, so a novice no more. <laughs> um, and I took second in light heavyweight open bodybuilding. So, three trophies or three medals, two first place um, placings, one second place placings. Overall, it's a very, very good, very good experience, very good show. Um, yeah, it was good. I'm not going to reveal too much about our plans for next year. They're not like 100% solidified. Well, there's one show, but we got to qualify for it. And the reason why I'm not going to speak about that show is because I haven't qualified for it. And we don't know which show we're going to choose um, in order to qualify for that show. We'll see. I'm going to play it pretty close to the cuff again, I think. And I had a pretty good time. Um, I don't want to say secretive, but being, you know, a bit more reserved with the progress picks and, 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 and just talking about prep and this year's competitive season overall leading up to it, it did a couple of things. One, it relieved for me that added bit of pressure, you know, to... Even though I recognize that I don't need to, um, just to upload progress stuff every week and have it, you know, track really well and, you know, become more and more shredded and just like kind of check these boxes. Um, that was a relief. And also, and this is the funny part because it didn't work. I felt like since last year I'd gotten some grief about. Um, 
posting progress pics every week from people who, whatever, either they don't understand the sport or, you know, according to them and in their words, I don't want to see that shit. Okay, check this out, dickhead. Don't tune in and don't look at it. That's how you get, that's how you fix that. You know what I mean? You don't know me, you don't know my life, you see what I put on social media, and if you don't like what I put on social media, the craziest part about that is, you ain't got to look at it. But you do, and you get weird about it. And you blame me for it. Anyway, I felt like being more reserved with with the progress picks and stuff like that this year, that that would curb some of that, but it didn't. (laughs) I ended up putting up some show picks, some results, um... And people that I don't even talk to is the crazy part. Like, I have no communication, no relationship to speak of whatsoever. We're just connected in other ways. Um, Just have an opinion about stuff. And that's just, it's really unfortunate that that people can have a negative view of something that they don't understand. Especially as, like, adults and, and people who, you know, are, you know, I guess successful, you know. You'd think that they would understand... Uh, the competitive nature of the sport, um, you know, and at least be able to intuit on a fundamental level, you know, the dedication and, and passion and hard work that, that goes into it, but it didn't shake out that way. <laughs> and it's okay. It's fine. You know, we there's a remedy to dealing with, with attitudes and, and opinions like that. You just cut them out. Right, cut them out, prune them out of your life. Don't give them access. That's what we do. We move on, and we focus on the goal, keeping them right out in front of us. Um, I did want to touch on another thing that that I've heard. I heard last year, and I heard a bit this year, um, and I'm I'm sure that I get I've addressed it on social media. Um, in another video perhaps but the thing about (laughs) making it look easy I can't think of a lot of things (sighs) like that that's ridiculous nothing is easy y'all see snapshots and you should be able to determine on your own right like how do all these things happen do I just Am I just like a... No, I'm not naturally ripped. I'm not naturally muscular. I'm not one of those people. Those people exist. I'm not one of them. To get up and do the fucking work every single day. And like that... I apologize, you know, if that is like edging close towards like sounding like hustle porn or any of that stuff. But I'm just telling y'all the truth and keeping it real. Um, Nothing comes to a sleeper but a dream. Right? And any of those dreams are going to be 100% deferred if you don't get up and put into action any kind of plan whatsoever and step forward toward an opportunity or things that you want to do. And whether or not, like, and, and we all understand that just because we do that and we put forth this effort and that we engage in these activities, that that's no guarantee of a positive outcome. There's no guarantee going into these shows that these judges are going to judge, like, you know, in my favor and see things the way that I do or that, you know, the people around me see them. They're going to see them how they see them. And the fact remains that these people, you know, it's a subjective thing, right? So you go into it understanding that that you could lose, (laughs) right? At least as a practical matter when it comes to the contest. But I do believe, like I posted the other day, like if you have a good heart and your intentions are pure and you do things like this, like bodybuilding for the right reasons, like I don't have any idea that I'll ever make any money at it, spend a lot of money on it, but whatever, it adds value to my life and I have a great time. Um, And it's so much fun. You know, to challenge myself and, you know, all the stuff that makes it really, really tough to be a loser, right? Because I showed up 
every day I do the work. And then I show up on show day and I step out there under those lights in front of a panel of people that I don't know. Well, I recognize because I've seen them a couple of times before now. Um, but and, and then there are, there's an audience there and I'm wearing these little tiny trunks and I'm completely exposed and there's no hiding what I did or didn't do. Right? There's, it's really, really tough. Like there is an art to bodybuilding. Um, you'll hear people say that, you know, one of the harder skills to master is, is hiding your flaws. <clears throat> but there's some stuff that you just cannot hide. Like, if you're not conditioned, there's no way, there's no posing routine that's going to hide the fact that you didn't show up in shape, right? Like, you just didn't show up in shape, and that's just, you know, whatever. Um, <clears throat> and there, there, there's deeper meaning like yeah man it feels great to be affirmed and like have your hard work recognized and you know get that first place medal against two other dudes that it was clear that they put in the work too and they worked really really hard I just was fortunate enough that what I presented presented um, closer to what I mean whatever the standard is to, to take first place Right, so that that doesn't mean that that second place is a moral or personal failing, you know, because you never know what's what's taking place during a person's process to get them there. What you can be sure of is that they're standing there, willing to participate still, whether or not they believe that they've done enough, or they believe or they know in their heart that they haven't. They're still there, so. It's odd to me to sit in judgment of something that you yourself aren't willing to do. Just you, you can't say that the difference there is that you don't have an interest in it. Um, because the truth is, you probably don't have what it takes internally to pull it off. Because it's not, it's fucking hard, dude. It's, it's hard. People look at the sport like it's just like this easy thing, but it's not. <laughs> it's fucking not. You think, oh, I'll just eat some chicken breast and lift some weights and, you know, do some stair stepper and, you know, put on some little trunks and get out there and shake it for three minutes. There's so much more that goes into it. Um, the psychology of, of navigating all the self doubt, like, because it creeps in. For me, Starting in about, you know, eight to six weeks out, like, just the, the, the you, you can't shut it off, so you, you just have to continue to, like, this is where a really good coach is invaluable, right, because they can kind of talk you down off the ledge, but, uh, you know, just, you start hearing it in your head audibly, like, you're not going to be ready, this is, oh man, this ain't for me, this is fucking terrible, this sucks, and like, you're depleted and flat, and you know, your energy is low and, you know, you're not strong and, you know, you just not sleeping very well. That's another part that a lot of people don't talk about. Towards the end of prep, you're getting closer to the show, your sleep is not that good. Like, mine was really good, like, in compared to last year, pound for pound, like, well, hour to hour compared to last year. My sleep during this prep was fucking phenomenal. <laughs> <laughs> like last year was fucking terrible dude the last like four weeks I was averaging maybe three to four hours a night if that like I was going to bed at six you know and then I'm waking up every hour hungry or going to the bathroom or you know what it, it was horrible horrible experience this year I had to go through a lot of that I did have some sleep disturbances towards the end but of Towards the end of prep for this final show on the 13th. But leading into the Tangi Johnson, the TJC, I had zero sleep disturbances. I slept like a baby. <laughs> and and even like the night of the show, that was probably the worst sleep that I got. But I was also just, you know, Viking fat on junk food and just like gaseous and, you know crampy and bloated and uncomfortable and hot and 
you know, just because they're pigged out. But the, the next day after that, like a baby, slept like a baby. And, we, you know, that Monday we were right back on plan and came into this, the Washington State Open, drier, harder, and leaner. But for that show, towards the end of that prep, um, I noticed like it was getting the fatigue was building for sure, um, and I was ready to compete <laughs> and get this this season over with, and we did, and it was a it was a success. I'm extremely happy with the outcome. Learned a lot. Um, as I did last year, but learned a lot, even more this year. And uh, really excited for next year. <laughs> really, really excited for next year. Uh, because the one thing that I did notice in the pictures is my glutes weren't um, as conditioned as they could have been. There are reasons for that that I don't need to go into, but I think that the, I just made some choices um, later in prep that I won't make next year, and that'll that's, that'll be fine. Not that the glues were there; it just I did some things, you know, later in prep that just didn't I wasn't able to bring them out. So next year they will be present <laughs> and accounted for, and I'm super stoked. About the the uh, trunks that I got, I'm gonna just roll with them. I'm gonna roll them into next year because I feel like they fit really well this year. And next year I'll be bigger, but I'll be better conditioned, and the, the fit of those trunks will be even even slicker. So, you know, I just like the way that they flew, flew, flowed, whatever. They were great. Um, shout out to shit, the KH Customs. I think I got them. I always say I'm going to link it in the description, but I never do. I never do that shit. I forget. <laughs> Let me see. KH. Yeah, KH Customs. Custom Trunks. Out of Canada. They're dope. Really, really dope. Took all my measurements and nailed it. Like, I... And, and I had, I knew I had to be objective, not where I wanted to land, but where I knew I was going to land um, on show day. And they nailed it. Like, and I was super nervous because like, I tried them on here and there. I didn't, I didn't do any updates, like progress updates in them because they, they literally did not fit the way I wanted them to fit until show day. And then they were spot on, which was crazy. And my coach would give me a little shit. He was like, oh, kind of crazy. It's almost like these, these people know what they're doing. <laughs> yeah, funny. You get it. Um, but no, everything went amazing, man. And, dude, again, it was so cool, like, having my wife there. Um, just in the crowd. We didn't, she didn't come backstage for the show, which is good, because she had my, a couple of my babies out in the crowd. So it was that was awesome for me to... I have my wife, my best friend, and then a couple of my babies, my daughters out in the crowd getting to see daddy do his thing. My three-year-old, she's like, you could hear in one of the videos, that's my daddy. That's my daddy. <laughs> this is cool, man. That's probably one of the, that, having my girls and my wife out there, um, I mean, the medals feel great. Don't don't get me wrong, but that I think is is one of the biggest rewards and and, and being able to show up and deliver uh, for my coach too you know because I'll just say this I got a lot of respect for that for my coach man she uh, yeah I just say that I got a lot of respect for her she showed up she definitely showed up Post show, so um, oh, oh, dude, the last couple of days I've been holding all the water, dude. It's crazy. So I waited, what, one ninety six point five, one ninety seven, one ninety six point five, show day, or no, not show day. 
uh, day before, night before. And then on show day, no, 197. Yeah, at weigh in. And then on show day, it continued to get drier. Um, and I showed up 196. Last year, stage weight was 178. This year's stage weight, 196, 197. Come on, play with me, boy. Don't play with me. Come on, let's talk about progress. Let's talk about progress. <laughs> and that was hard, man. Um, like I say, I made, and this is on me, my coaching guidance was on point, 100% everything, and, and I followed it. And it's just like, dude, it's just one thing I made a mistake, and I had a soft butt. <laughs> I had a soft butt. But it's all good. If that's the only thing like it, that I, I feel like I screwed up on, then I'm, I'm okay. Um, I feel like otherwise we brought great balance and great conditioning. And overall, the package was dope. And I'm fucking excited for next year, son. It's going to be wackadoodle. It's going to be wackadoodle. <laughs> it's going to be crazy. You just think about... Now, I don't know that I expect to make another jump like I did from stage to stage from one seven because I was crazily over dieted last year for sure. So I think what happened is I just kind of rebound and put on the muscle that I'd lost in prep going into last year. I probably should have landed about where I landed last year this year, right? Um, so I don't have any like crazy expectations for next year if I could do five six seven pounds you know weigh in the heavyweight the low end the heavyweight I'm cool with that it'll be I'll look really small compared to those monster dude there's a couple of dudes <laughs> and I mean that class was for them for sure like the uh, I mean there's a strategy to pick and chose to qualify um, and those dudes look crazy. I'm so glad, like, I, cause I could have, I think I could have, and I wouldn't have had the conditioning, but I could have hit like heavyweight. Maybe not, but I would have been really small. Like I would have looked anorexic compared to those dudes. They were massive. They were massive. I'm backstage just looking up. Cause like you don't see dudes that big, like in everyday life. You just don't like, you see guys look like me all the time. Um, but dudes that are like 230, 222, I'm talking about like muscle, not 230 of like, oh, I got 14 pounds of water, you know, 18 pounds of fat. No, these dudes were dry, hard, just mass monsters, just big old boys. And I'm back there, just like, I'm not trying to be a dick, right? But you look at this, it's impressive, bro. Like it fucking, it's impressive, man. When I when I was in Pierce County, I worked at um, the old Flex Gym down there, G Standard, and Gabe Moen ran that gym, owned and ran that gym, and I got to meet Stan Efforting. He's a big dude. Michael Hearn, he's a big dude. But these dudes look tiny compared to Gabe, and like he would he brought he brought in a couple of other dudes. Uh, who were sponsored by Mutant back then. What the? Dude, when you see dudes that are like 300 pounds, even in the off season, 310, 315 pounds, and they're like, even if they're like six foot, like that's still massive. These dudes are huge, bro. And like you just don't see dudes that big just rolling around, at, you know, LA Fitness or any kind of fitness. You just don't see it. Um... And the other part, too, <clears throat> which kind of bums me out, is more and more people gravitate. And, and I think this is great because it opens up the sport, gets more eyes on it, uh, makes it more accessible, you know, brings in more money, more money, can, you know, keep it rolling. But um, just like traditional, like open bodybuilding at least in the last three shows that I've been in, the, the like open bodybuilding classes have been pretty shallow. Like, it really sucks. Like the, the 
men's physique and the classic physique are pretty stacked. And like the women's classes, wellness and bikini and shit, they're stacked. But as far as like bodybuilding goes, not a ton of people doing like just like straight. And my coach and I talked about this, and, and she was like, she had a good point. She was like, dude, bodybuilding is hard. It's not easy. Like, and not saying that like classic is easy, or I don't know a lot about men's physique, but um, none of it's easy. You know, if we're going to go with the, the standard definition of what makes something easy, but bodybuilding is fucking hard. It's hard because a lot of people can get shredded from the front. But if they ever do get shredded from the back, I mean, your glutes, hamstrings, your back, low back, all that stuff, that's harder if it ever happens, right? Because um, that just takes you to another level of dedication that, like, dude, if you, you just won't know what the fuck I'm talking about. Unless you experience it. Competitors, like other athletes, they might know. Wrestlers will definitely know. Because I was just talking to one of the one of the uh, other dudes backstage. And he was a wrestler. And I did a little bit myself. And my brother, he's a wrestling coach. But he wrestled for, you know, fuck man, 21 years, something like that. But um, there's not another sport in the world that requires as much mental and internal fortitude as wrestling especially when you're training to get in condition and making weight nothing else comes close I've done MMA I've done Muay Thai bodybuilding nothing comes close wrestlers are just different so they get it so I think like talking to a wrestler like they would understand (laughs) is what the point of that rant was but Man, this this thing that we do is just so much fun <sighs> because it's like it's like a it's like sculpture, right? And then that's not a new idea that I just came up with, but it it makes a ton of sense in my mind, right? Like you get to you get this feedback you know, either from the judges or your coach about where you want to make additions. So, you, you know, you do these moves and you eat this food and you rest and, you know, you add more here, or you add more here, or you add just a little bit here, a little bit here, a little bit here, a little bit here. And then when you're, when you're stripping all the fat and the water away and things start to reveal, and you're like, wow, that did work. Because you don't see it. Like a lot of it, um, you know, there, there are other ways that we measure progress, but... You don't see a lot of that that finer detail until, you know, you strip pretty much all that fat away and water away. And then it then it comes out. Then you know like, yeah, we are on the money with this one. We did it. <laughs> um someone asked me, like, does it bother me that I started competing so late? No. no I mean I mean I have had thoughts like, damn. What would have happened if I would have started doing this in my twenties? I don't know. Don't know. No idea. What 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 would have happened? Who knows? I could have got hurt. You don't know. I don't, I don't waste a lot of time, you know, in that headspace. I know that yeah, I'm 46 and I'm having a blast. Um, I don't expect it. I don't do. This is corny. For me to say, but I, I'll say it like this: I didn't start competing with an idea that this was going to going to turn lucrative, and that I was going to make a living, or that I was going to parlay it into uh, training people or any of that stuff. So I'll tell you what: I had my first idea that I wanted to be a trainer when I was about nineteen, right? Because I've made a bunch of different transformations to my physique since I was a kid. And I had my first idea that I wanted to be a trainer when I was 19. But I picked up pretty quickly um, that this is a special thing, especially the relationship between a trainer and and someone who's looking to improve their level of fitness. (coughs) 
first, most people have a very skewed idea in that creates uh, unrealistic expectations about what fitness is, what it takes to get in shape, and what the level of commitment that it will take to look like me or somebody else, right? They don't understand that losing weight is different than losing fat. And that just to see the scale move, and this is going to be an over, oversimplification, but just to see the scale move is a poor metric to gauge whether or not you're making progress. I know that sounds fucked up, but it's true. Because what you're going to do is you're if you don't have the right things in place, if you're not if you've not built muscle and if you're not working to actively retain muscle, what you're gonna do is you're just gonna lose weight overall and more of that is going to be muscle than you want to be. And you're going to end up with a smaller version of the body that you have right now. And you're going to maintain that level of dissatisfaction in your look um, and settle for just losing weight, right? Um, which is not what anybody wants. When I was talking to my son yesterday, because he's in the gym with me now and I'm stoked on that. Um, but we were talking about and I said, gaining weight. He's like, what? I don't want to gain weight. I said, but you do, son. You do. You want to build muscle. That's probably the most androgenic and thermogenic thing that you can do for your body and give you that look. That's what I said to him. I said, hey, so you want to, you want to look more muscular? You want to have more muscle definition? You, you know, all the stuff, right? He said, yeah, okay, we got to gain weight. We got to build muscle. I mean... I don't mean to say that stripping body fat to reveal that harder muscle that we just built doesn't do that because it does. But you have to have the muscle to reveal after losing the body fat, right? Um, very simple, but not easy. Anyway, so I recognized... <laughs> This stuff early on and not that I don't want to help people and I don't want to teach I just don't want to be their teacher right I understood early that I wanted to work with people who were already established as athletes people that knew how to lift people that had an idea about nutrition but just needed that added level of accountability and I tried it I tried being a trainer um, I was I did you know I've done workshops and you know I've helped people you know lose body fat and you know get into better shape and, and taught them better habits um, but ultimately I made a decision to step away from that uh, form of service um, directly anyway <clears throat> for one reason I'll tell you what that is I don't want to create a dynamic because I understand my personality and I don't want to create a dynamic where I'm frustrated because I know you're bullshitting me and you're not listening to the instruction that I'm giving you. You're not eating food. You're not moving the way you're supposed to. You're not resting the way you're supposed to. Um, because if you were, we would see things that would give us clues or cues. You know, Not that everyone responds in the exact same way or same fashion. But we know what to look for to understand that, okay, these things are in place and maybe a little less of this, maybe a little more of that, right? But we're trending in a, in a direction that we know that things are working. If that's not happening, something's off. Um, and most of the time, in my experience, most of the time, it isn't that your hormones are wacky. It isn't any of the other things that we blame it on. It's just, it, it really just boils down to food. <laughs> what I've seen um, in my personal life and working with others it, it's always the food part is the hardest right because um, I've, what I think I observe in people is they, they have more of a desire based on their experience to this point with food to be entertained by food and to have fun with food rather than to sacrifice a bit of that entertainment and fun um for purpose, right? <clears throat> really tough. And there's no judgment. I, I've been there. I, I, I've struggled before too, so it's no judgment. But I decided that that, that wasn't for me. Um, and 
maybe it would be better for me to stay in the career that I'm in, in social services and, and, or human services, social work essentially, because that's wildly rewarding to me. Um, and, you know, leave personal training to, you know, the people who are better at it, who get less frustrated with people. <laughs> and, uh, yeah, and I can live the advice, right? I can live the demonstration. And if you can glean from that, you know, any tips or tricks, cool. And if you reach out to me, I'll put you in the right direction of a great coach or coaches, right? I'm just not going to be the one. It just won't be me. <laughs> it just won't be me. I mean, I, I do here and there, you know, just for friends if they want some general guidance and stuff like that. I'm not just going to, like, completely shut people out, but I'm not your coach. I'm not your coach. I, just, I recognize that about myself. I'm just not your coach. <laughs> uh, yeah. I got off on a bit of a tangent there, but post show, what I noticed is, um, dude, man, not after the second show because we got back on plan relatively quickly, but after the, not after the first show, but after the second show, dude, I just, I was just, my body was just holding this water. It's getting better now because I'm taking like some mild water pills, but super mild shit you can get at GNC, like, um, in like half dose, you know, I'm drinking high amounts of water, just flushing that sodium out from all the junk food that I had post show, but my body was just not wanting to let it go. Just not wanting to let it go. It was looking super flat and washed out and didn't have a worry that I was a ton of fat because day of the show had a lot of fun. Day after the show still had some fun with food, but the actual food volume wasn't crazy high. Right, like it did a bunch of snacking, like nibbling and stuff like that. But I, you know, I just used to go hog wild with donuts, and candy, and pizza, and burgers, and any of that shit. Like, I had a couple of milkshakes and you know some coffee and, like I say, some little snacks and shit. But the water was just—it's starting to come off now, um, as the sodium and, and and you know the glycogen is you know being depleted or used up rather back in the gym and, you know, doing cardio. And that's the other thing. Cardio isn't as intense. <clears throat> the duration isn't as, as high. Food's a bit higher because post-show, you do want to get a bit more body fat back on you as quickly to, to regulate sleep and, and hormone levels. But like I say, I haven't had a big problem with that. Um, but anyway, that I think has been like the, the only other difference between this year and last year is like after the second show, the water just really trying it just really stuck to me and it's coming off now pretty easily. But um, taking it easy, just kind of like active, you know, active in the gym, but we're not going crazy. You know, giving my body a chance to reacclimate to you know training and higher food volume and all of the stuff. And you want that runway to be as long as possible. You know, don't want to drive fat up too far or too high. Um, coach has got, you know, a, a reverse coming in soon. So we're going to, I've just been clean, cleaning, cleaning it up. Um, and just, you know, actively recovering in the meantime. But, yeah, anyway, that's about it for that. I will touch base again. Um, let you guys know how things are going. But, yeah, if you didn't do it on the way in. Do it on the way out. Hit that like, subscribe, post notification bell so you can stay up to date on all the cool shit we talk about here on your Bees Like That podcast. But I'm going to go because I got to pee. Peace, y'all.